form meets function. Hi there, Coach Sage Kando, sagerunning.com here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about the science of running shoe design. And in scientific fashion, I'm first going to admit to you my biases, biases, as well as experience in uh, running shoes, uh, personal experience, background. But the bias is, of course, I've been sponsored by Hoka One One for over the last six years. I will say, though, I've also been sponsored by other shoe companies. Uh, graduating college, I was sponsored by Hanson's Brooks for 2.5 years, running in Brooks running shoes, uh, mainly on the roads, as well as, well, cross country too. Um, it, at Cornell, it was a Nike-sponsored school, so we were running in a lot of track spikes and road racing flats, uh, as well as as well as my first year in mountain ultra trail running, 2012 to 2013. I was sponsored by Scott Sports, so I do have a history of that. Uh, in middle school, growing up running over 20 years ago, I was running in Asics. I've tried pretty much all brands. And I've also worked in specialty running shoe stores, fitting hundreds of people at all different levels, beginners, advanced runners, people getting into fitness uh, over the years, uh, starting in college, working at Finger Lakes Running Company in Ithaca, New York, uh, selling all different brands of outdoor gear and apparel, triathlon gear, and different running shoe brands. Hoka One One wasn't even a, a brand back then, actually, as well as working for a couple years as a post collegiate at the Hanson's running shops in Detroit, Michigan area, metro area, uh, fitting more people for running shoes, not just Brooks, but all brands uh, even back then. And then also just educational background. I did major, I got a bachelor of science at Cornell University in design, uh, more specifically my concentration was in human factors and ergonomics or ergonomic design, looking at the usability of products and the interface with the human body. So, you know, I did take, start off as an engineer, did take some physics, uh, mechanics, as well as, you know, bio, chem, uh, engineering calculus, and then anatomy, uh, looking at different aspects of the physics behind running and running form. And of course, on this channel, you could see our different running form videos, different shoe review videos. Uh, I did a video a couple years ago, I'll link to at the end of this, as well as up there, on fitting the type of running shoe for your type of foot, because it is a bit of an individual thing, and technology has changed over the years. And I'll get into some key aspects that I think you should have uh, if you're looking and buying a new shoe or trying on new shoes and how it influences your own biomechanics, your own form in terms of comfort and speed, uh, allowing you to run fast and train efficiently, but also to hopefully reduce the risk for injury and so you could get more enjoyment out of the sport. And you know, I'll admit it's a hard thing to say because it's very different and there are different brands. Obviously, I'm just going to talk about Hoka shoes, but I got more extreme examples between, even within a brand, you have extreme examples uh, within the realm of different designs. So this is more about the science, basic science entry level of running shoe design and how that impacts your form. So the first thing uh, we're going to kick off is, people say, why do I even need a running shoe? I read the book Born to Run. Trust me, I was working in the Hanson's running shops when Born to Run came out. And people were like, I'm going all barefoot, I'm getting the Vibram five fingers. Uh, and that's great. The human body, the human foot, in terms of anatomy, is designed to run very well uh, barefoot. It's, it's an amazing thing. Generally, our ancestors were running on soft surfaces like dirt and grass. And, uh, you know, your feet get tough and calloused a bit, but they could also get cut up quite a bit. A lot of us live in concrete jungles and we got to run on asphalt and pavement, artificially hard surfaces. Well, maybe you want a little bit of protection for that, right? Maybe there's shards of glass and drug needles and uh, batteries and plastic and things you could step on out there that might cut up your feet. Well, I'd rather not go to the ER and get stitches, right? And yeah, you could callous your feet up and get tough, lightweight feet, but think of the top marathon runners in the world, right? They're not running, Kipchoge's not running under two hours in the marathon barefoot, now is he? Um, you're good, you're gonna be able to run faster basically with less pain on pavement without a shoe or with a shoe on rather than without a shoe. And it goes to the concept, basic physics, that 
you know, lighter, a lighter shoe is generally better for running fast, but lighter is not always better. Lighter is not always better. Uh, you could be running the Boston Marathon, you want a big downhill start on pavement, and some of that cushion and responsiveness could actually help save your quads and save you energy than if you're going with a super light, really flimsy shoe, uh, maybe that wouldn't be as good for you, but it does depend on your form, your body weight, and your biomechanics, and we'll get into that uh, at the end of this video. But, you know, the barefoot craze there, people get into the, the drop, talking about basic anatomy of a shoe. Uh, you know, what's the difference between the thickness in the heel versus the thickness in the forefoot, right? That difference, be it 20 centimeters down to 10, it wouldn't be in this because this is a Hoka, uh, that would be a 10 millimeter drop. I said centimeters, I meant millimeters. Um, so that's the drop or the offset of a shoe and a lot of people rate that, you know, people are like, oh, you need the zero drop or most hokas are around five millimeter drop, five millimeter offset. And when we look at the shoe from this side view, the side profile, this is the Hoka Rihi, by the way, very flexible, lightweight shoe, uh, nice racing flat. It, when we look at it from the side view here, we could say that that the shoe has this drop, but it's a it's also an offset. We could call it a dynamic offset because of the curvature, the rocker profile, so to speak, of the shoe. It's curved like a like a rocking chair, right? So that's kind of a dynamic offset, right? If you depends on what angle you're landing at with your foot. If you're landing more forefoot, or if your heel striking even. Uh, there's a, a dynamic component to it because it's a curved. It's not a straight line, right? It's not this linear thing where it's like, okay, I'm in this platform shoe and it's this perfect wedge triangle of a shape. Maybe some shoes are designed like that. Uh, you know, they're zero drop shoes. But, uh, you know, human body curves, the anatomy curves, and we're talking about that curvature. Uh, so sometimes they'll call it a dynamic offset. And that's really the first anatomy piece that I wanted to get uh, through. Um, and, you know, the thing with shoe design is we have these different components to it. I'm going to break that down in a second. But what we look at with the shoe is how old does it fit? How old does it fit? And science aside, a lot of times when people first try on a shoe, they'll know right away if it's comfy, if it's kind of too big or too small. Most people, most people when they first get into running shoes though, they, they size them too small. And that's what we learned in run specialty stores, and this is the point I'm gonna nail home, is that you wanna have some wiggle room with your toes. So, you know, the barefoot people, the Vibram Five Fingers, the, you know, the, it's right. You do wanna have some wiggle room with your toes. You wanna be able to work your natural foot a bit. And if the shoe's too small and it's too short and your, your toes are all squeezed up in here, pretend my hand is your fingers and is the, your toes in the shoe, uh, they can't, you can't move your toes very well, you can't spread out very much. Also, you're gonna start running and your feet are gonna swell up, right? A lot of kinetic energy, uh, dissipated as heat, right? Uh, but also swelling, right? You've got fluids in your body, your feet swell up, maybe your toenails are banging into the front of the shoe. It's not gonna be comfortable. You get blisters, you get hot spots, but your feet, your toes can't be flexing very much uh, as you're running an ultra or a marathon or a 5K or a long distance race. So usually a lot of people have to size up uh, it depends on the brand and it depends on the model, but you don't want your feet banging in the front You want to have some space and you don't want them pressing in on the your big toe or your pinky toe, right? You need some wiggle room So that's the first thing of proper shoe fit and it depends on the shoe design some have more volume than others uh, And part of that is in this upper part of the shoe. They call it the upper literally uh, You know how flexible it is where do the seams line up, right? You're looking at that but then also, in terms of shoe design, we're looking at the geometry of it, the last shape, so to speak. And I'll get out the Rincon here, Hoka One One Rincon. All right, it's, you know, it's pretty thick through here, through this uh, the middle part of where your pinky toe would be. But this curvature, this whole shape of the shoe, we call it the last. And that'll determine a lot of the fit as well. So it's not just the materials in the upper, this upper part of your shoe, but the last and how that fits around your foot, like a glove or not like a glove. And everyone's a bit different, right? You might have a bunion, your feet might, you might need a wider width. A lot of people need wider widths. It's better to have a little extra room than have it be too tight. And socks, you know, the type of socks you're wearing could change that type of feel. So when you go into a shoe store, you try on different shoes, realize you might have to size up a full size, half a size, up or down, depending on the brand or the model. Realize that, you know, a little wiggle room is always good, as long as your heel's not slipping out the back, right? Uh, so, getting back to the actual science and materials of the design, right? We got the upper, 
uh, we got the outsole, uh, midsole, and we'll bring up the torrent too here because we got traction, right? We got lugs. Well, that's great for traction. This is the outsole of the shoe, right? Could be uh, some sort of sticky rubber, Vibram outsole, something like that. Uh, that changes the properties of the shoe on impact, right? The feeling of when your foot hits the ground, be it a rock or trail or dirt or pavement, track, uh, that interface it could kind of dampen things, right? You know, in impact force changes the properties of the shoe, it changes how it flexes, it changes how it feels, right? And we're going to get into the next component here, the midsole, which is the really the heart of a shoe. Uh, you know, what materials they use in there. And the science behind it, and well, you know, I looked at this study, uh, it was kind of an old study, but I think it was done pretty well, actually. It talks about how the density of the midsole, we're talking about, you know, using different materials. This is Hoka's ProFly midsole, right? Dynamic changing of, of more firm material versus softer material. And we're looking at materials like an EVA foam, generally being like a soft, cushy, you know, springy feel versus like a, a Hoka R-mat or some of their more, uh, even like a rubber compound that could be a more dense foam and they, they call that firm or responsive and the thing with uh you know a lot of hoka shoes they're inherently stable we call that but back in the day when i used to sell shoes in very distinct categories they would say okay we would look at your arch type the the bottom of your foot we did, you could do a wet paper test we had people walk on this machine uh looking at pressure points you could just look at someone walking or look at their arch shape and in here, if they have a custom orthotic or they don't, or they have arch pain or plantar fasciitis, and you could see if they had a high arch or a, a flat foot, uh, and how much they pronate. And we're talking about pronation is the torque going this way on landing. And what we would categorize running shoes in was, is it a stability shoe? Does it provide pronation support? And a lot of different brands, uh, not Hoka, especially not in this example, they would actually put a higher density uh, well, there'd be a, a brick basically on the medial edge, the inside big toe edge of your shoe, you'd see this hard, uh, different material. Be, be, maybe it's a dark gray material or some sort of stiffer foam, so to speak. Uh, actually put in a plate or a post, we'd call it, and it would stiffen up that shoe so that when your foot lands and you're rolling in or pronating, I've kind of done videos on this pronation aspect, I'll link to it in the description below, uh, it would help slow the rate of your pronation. They've done a lot of scientific studies on this. Uh, this one I was checking out and it, it makes a difference. So the density of the materials used in the midsole and the combination of how they're used and the vectors and angles of how they're used, the midsole is really a key component and how it affects your foot action when it hits the ground. The feeling of cushion, the feeling of responsiveness, how much you're, you're springing off, right? We put a carbon fiber shank in here, carbon fiber plate, it's gonna change things up a bit, right? We use a different durometer, the density or the springiness aspect, subjective terms, cushioning, springiness, uh, of the midsole materials, we change that and we might change how you, how your foot, how your arch collapse, how your, how much your foot rolls, how much of a of a heel strike is going on, how quickly you spring off on on your toes, on toe off, uh, and and the the feeling of the shoe overall, right? And the feeling at different speeds, and also realize these materials will physically change the weight of the shoe, which could have, could negatively affect or positively affect your running economy or running efficiency. So a lot of science and numbers uh, going into this and I just wanted to just brush up on them very briefly with these aspects of running shoe design. It's because you hear a lot of things. And so I think the key takeaway, the key important thing is to realize, you know, look at your quiver of running shoes, how many different ones you have. It's good to maybe rotate through a couple different models. I run on any service, any distance, so I have road shoes like the Hoka Rincon, but I also have the trail shoes like the Torrent, Torrent 2, <clears throat> Evo Jaws, Hoka One One Speed Goat, stuff like that, the Rihi, which I showed uh, here, lighter weight shoes for faster speed work, maybe on days when you're pounding out the pavement, you want a little more cush feel, a little more arch support, stuff like that. Even going up and down a half size, the fit is very critical. The fit is very cr critical because you're working with your body. The physics of your natural anatomy and your natural foot and realize we're all different. 
uh, but not making sure that shoe's not too small. So you're ordering shoes online, uh, you best to get them fitted in the store, hopefully have a good return policy uh, so you don't wear them out, you know, try on before you buy, so to speak, uh, to make sure it's a good fit for you. And you know, the comfort level is important, the space, the wiggle room is important, but then the materials and how your foot interacts in them when you start running in them is important because it could either affect your pronation, could affect how your arch feels, could affect uh, your running performance in terms of speed and efficiency. So uh, that's really my my little spiel here on running shoe design. Feel free to ask questions. Again, I did work in running shoe stores and sold, sold all different brands uh, over the years, uh, as well as have that BS in ergonomic design. Uh, it's kind of a nerdy thing that I like to, to get really into. Um, but uh, again, there'll be more training talks on here with physiology and stuff like that. Another nerdy thing I like to get into. Spring the sign bring the physics, bring your A-game. Thank you so much for all your support on here. Hope this uh, YouTube video finds you well. Again, check out those videos I referenced below, picking the right type of running shoe for your foot and running form. Uh, thanks so much for all your support. Thanks to Patreon supporters for really making this channel possible. Title sponsor, Hoka One One, keeping the dream alive. Hope you're doing well, and stay tuned for more.